of Mob Souls, so I'm going to let you get in your respective lane here. Uh, more of Souls, <laughs> a dungeon I haven't seen in a long time. Jack, we're back. We're back better than ever here. Starting off the Mob Souls with Method NA versus Stupid Mistakes. Yeah, so, you know, we, we already alluded to from kind of the, the, the preamble here with uh, Rob. We're just going to see right away a massive pull into Imran. It's really just going to be all eyes, double Windwalkers on both sides. going to be all eyes on these Windwalkers getting the pre wop Of course, Method doesn't have that opportunity because we know JP is just so comfortable on that rest of door, which is often to use here. Yeah, and you were saw, seeing a lot of times, um, you know, JB had been practicing on his stream, you know, trying to be able to work on more and more of, Jeez. of course, that pallet. Sorry to cut you <laughs> off, but 75 mil damage coming in from that fire mage right now. <laughs> huge, huge damage. But you're seeing, like, a lot of times, you know, JB had been uh, going for practice, but as they started going into time trials, they started actually going into a lot of the tournament. He was just feeling a lot more comfortable going into that rest of Drew. That was something that he knew very well, and he wanted to be able to kind of bring to the table here. And but you're all, you are also seeing, like, kind of the expense of it, you know, where he's just now starting to get out a little bit of damage, whereas you're seeing uh, Leaxa at the, on the side of Stupid Mistakes being able to get in there, drop some Consecrates, be able to have wings up. That additional damage is going to be going out here. So you are seeing right off the bat, you know, a damage advantage for Stupid Mistakes. Yeah, and, you know, it's important to know, Jack, you just talked about it, too, in terms of bloodlust timing. We did have stupid mistakes to use their bloodlust on the pull. Method is opting to save it, likely for that post Harboron large ship pull. Stupid mistakes doing really well here, obviously ahead on the Imran, by uh, on the Imran, the Imran boss, of course, <laughs> by about 12% right now because of that bloodlust. But I mean, just so much damage coming out of both teams. Both teams doing really well. And of course, we see Sense on the DK, a good friend of mine, used to playing Protware. Unfortunately, Protware is not the uh, tank of choice for these speedrun dungeons. Imran here about to fall for stupid mistakes in just a moment. Yeah, and speaking of tanks, you know, we see Ban name uh, who also went by E Mangle in the last tournament when he played for Team Premonition here. Uh, last you know last year he was of course opting for the Guardian Druid and on live servers he's been playing quite a bit of Vengeance Demon Hunter. So at, at this point you know you are seeing all these tanks you know starting to adapt getting into that blood decay just because it brings so much to the table here. Yeah, I mean, the team's really not too far apart here. Method and they kind of rejoin the bowels of the ship where Student Mistakes is already doing the large pull. Jack, we talk about this every week. This pull is really dangerous in here just because of the confines of the ship. Not a lot of space. We already see that one death go down for one of the Windwalkers, and this is just what I was mentioning. So much splash damage. You have that Defiant Strike going out. You have the Warp, of course, from the Swift Blades, as we can see on Method and a screen. You have the Quaking. You just have a ton of damage. You have the Barrels to dodge, and I know you love getting hit by those, Jack. <laughs> not one bit, Ted, here. And you're seeing, you know, of course, JB just kind of be able to diff out, staying back, keeping his distance here, and, and solely focusing on that healing, because the biggest thing is going to be that execution for a lot of these teams. You know, it is fortified, a quaking, and a bursting, so it's always important to be able to keep an eye on that, especially as you're going into, you know, getting all of those mobs out at the same time, right? And at this point, it's the survivability aspect. You're seeing everyone dropping low. You're seeing E-Man, of course, popping his purgatory there. It's going to be very, very dangerous coming up. Neeb and Nainor, the two melee on Stupid Mistakes, dipping so low with this dangerous trash here. Luckily, no fatalities on their side, making sure that as much D curses come out of uh, Method and A, of course, for that curse on the trash. That has an inverse correlation with damage done and health pool. We see the skip here from Method and A on the side. Grime Lord gets pulled to the side. Rest of the group runs upstairs. They do res the tank, so this was a death on purpose in order to skip some of the trash, Jack. Yep, and at this point, you are also seeing Stupid Mistakes going through and taking care of that skip. I believe... Uh, pieces uh, actually blinked ahead to be able to draw all the trash away and yeah they actually were able to get the quick invisibility so yeah I they're mean, actually getting a uh, nice stealth here to be able to get past all these champions yeah all of the pieces are coming together they do get upstairs to harbor on right now ready to pull the second boss here of the dungeon of course we're not in that tyrannical setting we're in the fortified right now i believe yes we are mm -hmm. um so you know a quick note about this boss because imran just dies so fast we never really have a chance to talk about him but for harbor on here a few of the abilities to watch out for you see the scythe coming in right now for stupid mistakes players want to make sure they dodge that it's just a line in front of the boss furthermore you do spawn these servitors on a player so it's really important for the player to kind of get near the boss, make sure they spawn that ad and interrupt it properly on top of the boss. And lastly, Jack, of course, we have uh, not only the, the nether rips that go on the ground, but those four ads that spawn on a player stun them and do some damage. Yep, and it's always important to watch out for the fragments and, like you said, being able to bring all of those in because it will stun the player and it will constantly deal ticking damage to them until all of those four ads are, of course, uh, uh, neutralized. So as they, of course, spawn, they will be spreading out into different directions. Very important to be able to get on top of those. But also, a lot of times, make sure that you're having, you know, the Servitor, when it aligns with the fragment, having all of that in together, allowing as much cleave damage as possible, and it really goes a long way into making sure you're getting the interrupts out and you're able to do with the stun quickly. Stupid mistakes maintaining their lead here. They have about 14% on the boss ahead of Method and A right now, but also the two deaths. One of the deaths, of course, was on purpose on Method and A, but they did have that unfortunate Windwalker death as well. That adds another five seconds of the board. So all eyes really are going to be on this 
uh, post harbor on pull with the ship where method and a will likely use their bloodlust stupid mistakes of course not having access to that bloodlust so it's going to be method and a's chance to really try and catch up on the map because after that it's just going to be who kills helia first yep and at this point you're likely going to be looking for method and a to start uh pulling Skjall along with all of the deck pull. We are also seeing, you know, Method NA catching up so rapidly in terms of damage. of damage as JB is able to actually get into his Feral Affinity and take, or sorry, take advantage of his Feral Affinity there, be able to dish out quite a bit of extra damage here. And they are beating stupid mistakes and they're going to be having Bloodlust ready to be able to pull the entire deck. Method NA just floors it, beats Harbor on over stupid mistakes and does massive pull on the ship here. Now, we'll have to keep an eye if they pull Skjall. It looks like they're actually not pulling Skjall. We do see that Bloodlust come up right away on Method NA. A death going down on stupid mistakes. Mistakes. They use that battle res right away to get the wind walker up. Finish off the. Actually, no, they don't use the battle res. Excuse me. The battle res is saved. They get the wind walker up, and we're seeing the big pull come in for method. No skull pull with it. Stupid mistakes doing a similar pull here. Of course, they don't have bloodlust available to them. Yeah, and at this point, you know, like I said, they're not pulling Skjall, so they actually are playing a little bit safer on this point. But really, if they're going to be able to pull this off, they're going to be able to neutralize it so much more rapidly uh, than Stupid Mistakes is. This is going to be the opportunity they really need to be able to get this lead. They just need to make sure they're clearing out the last of that first thing, as they do very, very well. But Maze just doing so much damage. Who cares about Bloodlust right now? Peaking at 60 mil DPS around. Both teams having to go just a bit defensive. We do have the Holy Paladin go down. No battle res used, as they can just release at the checkpoint from where Harboron just fell. Method a, safely killing all the trash stupid mistakes as well and now getting ready to pull skill alone more of an old skill strat usually we see these teams do this sometimes we have seen some pull, uh, teams do a really risky pull of skill on top of the trash both teams playing it safe here but a lot of damage coming in on stupid mistakes just barely stabilizing have three deaths incurred on top of it after the one on the boss it's incredible actually they're not far off from where method na is at i mean method na yeah super mistakes definitely could have pulled quite a bit more rapidly on a skill to be able to make up for it because skill actually is you know at 50 percent uh, at this point coming in but their pull wasn't too far off from method na's you know they had just a little bit that they had to mop up there it does look like they actually uh, could have just been playing a little bit more uh safely to be able to make sure people are getting topped off because the bursting was just bringing everybody down so low on super mistakes and he was barely able to be able to keep people top there so maybe that would have been able to accelerate their pull a little bit more cleanly but at this point with Skial, i mean they just gotta make sure everyone's staying alive they're able to get it down quickly and like you said it's gonna come down to a race with helia yeah, so Skjall still has about 40% to go for stupid mistakes as M Method NA has already started their RP on Helia going downstairs. Now, about this fight, there's a two phases, uh, there is two phases to this fight. You do have three uh, tentacles that spawn at the beginning of the fight. You have to kill six overall between Grasping and, of course, Destructor. Does not really matter which of the six you kill. You just have to get six right away. Players will have to go to either side of the ship to avoid her huge frontal that will likely one, eh, maybe not one-shot players, but likely be dangerous enough to one-shot them. And, of course, there are random tentacles that will spawn, which is why you're seeing the players kind of hug the sides of the ship, making sure that not only do they not have one of the random tentacles spawn in one of those predetermined locations, but they also don't accidentally get one of those destructors jack that hits them before the tank is able to react. Yeah, it's very important to be able to kind of hug those sides, and you know, even if you're looking at one of the uh, areas where tentacles have already spawned, you know, of course, there's you know a nice little safety radius around there that they can watch out for. You are seeing JB and Marvin just sticking to that right side, you know, fairly close to where one tentacle has already spawned, and when, of course, it does pop up, they're able to kind of move away from any of the, the splash. Uh, damage that can kind of come around where a little swirl will come around and then they're able to relocate themselves of course as you're saying as Helia does sweep the ship the second destructor of course not spawning in method and ace favor does spawn in the back of the ship it also has a chance to spawn in the front of the ship where they be much better because they can start to more effectively cleave especially with this double dps uh, double melee comp if more effectively cleave the destructors and the grasping coach mid getting quite low there no death fortunately we still have perg procked over on the tank who does go down they're going to get that battle res up right away fortunately they had that left over from the trash coach Mitch now Mitch now goes down he does not have the battle res either so they're gonna have to either four man the rest of this or just opt to try and wipe quickly and get back stupid mistakes slowly catching up and the full team's healthy right now it's the scariest thing right now because you are gonna be looking at stupid mistakes trying to be able to get their bloodlust back to be able to get maybe one more use here to be able to kind of catch up and at this point method NA has to be able to burn down the last of the boss because it, again if they were to actually die and reset they have to do all of those tentacles all over again and they just really can't afford it this is an absolute nightmare for method an A right now. They're going to have that battle res coming up and I would say a few seconds, 30 seconds or so, but Helia does enter phase two now where she'll have one minute of uptime where players can DPS her here, dodging her breath that covers one third of the platform. 
at the same time. But after that minute, she will submerge Jack for 20 seconds, being inaccessible to be DPS, and the players just kind of have to run around. So a lot of damage that needs to come out of the teams to catch up. Now, it is important to note that Helia does not actually need to get to 0% to die. She needs to get it to about 70 and a half before the encounter is over. But Meth is just going to stick it out, going to four-man for as long as they can. And as soon as that battle res is up, they're going to opt to res coach. Yeah, and at this point, you know, they're about to get that submerged. They should probably be able to get mid up just for a little bit of damage before the submerge does go out here. But at this point, you have 30 seconds left on the timer for uh, Bloodlust for stupid mistakes. If they're going to be able to get the timer, it probably will end up getting maybe you know, almost a full duration of Lust because uh, uh, the, the phase does actually uh, last about a minute before she does end up submerging. So they should be able to get some amount of Bloodlust timing, but it, I don't think there's going to be enough to get that one phase here. I think it's similar to what you said pre-match. They're going to get maybe 20 to 30 seconds of that Bloodlust. They're going to pop it right away in five seconds. Mid does come back up for Method right now. They have entered their first submerge phase. We usually see teams enter the kind of 72 to 73 range before submerge. Helly at 75% for Method because they had to four-man. We don't see the Bloodlust come up. They actually might be waiting for the moment she submerges and then comes back up. Cauterize has already procced on pieces the mage over on stupid mistakes got to keep an eye on that they do have the battle is available but certainly don't want to be having any deaths with that five second penalty yeah and this is the scariest thing is actually method na has already come out of their submerge phase at this yep. point you know stupid mistakes really missed their window of opportunity if they're going to be waiting on that bloodlust i'm not sure what they were kind of waiting on it seems like a silly mistake to me as method na is taken down Halia just needs one percent left to be able to close out this series uh, close out this game here oh that was i mean yeah certainly stupid mistakes had that opportunity but you know it just wasn't enough jack they have the death at the end as well with the holy power I'm not sure that was kind of just for fun if they know what, what has happened already, but Helia does come up. They should be able to. There's the bloodlust, as we said. I would have used it earlier. Even, yeah. even if they did waste half of it at this point, they had to gamble and try to take the match from them. The death differential, there actually was no death differential between the two teams, so it was non-existent. It was just a matter of who DPS the boss faster, but ultimately Method made the right call with sticking to it, four-manning as long as they could, and they ended up taking the match as a result. Method doing uh, what seemed impossible last weekend, getting a win on Mob Soul. So the curse is broken. Uh, stupid mistakes, arguably living up to the name, maybe, would we say, uh, in that situation? Because uh, that Bloodlust pop, let's go over it a little bit more. Let's talk about why that Bloodlust pop maybe could have been done differently. Uh, I mean, it's. They had one of two choices. I mean, I, I'm going to lay down some really heavy analysis here. They could have either Bloodlusted or not Bloodlusted. Right? Why no, no, but I mean, jokes aside, the thing is, I, I kind of agree with Jack on this one, but at the, at the end of the day, they also probably realized that even with that 20-ish seconds of time of Bloodlust, it probably wasn't enough. The, Helia was at 74, 75%. Even with that Bloodlust, it wasn't enough for them to one phase, so they tried to get the most out of their Bloodlust the moment she popped up. But even then, when she popped up, would she have stayed alive another 40 seconds for the Bloodlust? Probably not. Well, at that point, you know, when they Bloodlusted, it took, you know, what, 10 seconds, maybe, to actually burn down the rest of the boss there. So, I mean, you know, maybe they had some dots rolling or things like that. But at that point, you know, they should be ready watching that timer the second it actually uh, comes back up to at least try for it. But that's also, you know, like, you, like we were talking about with the bloodless timings, it's also a very awkward situation is if you're not able to get a two phase out of it, or sorry, if you're not able to one phase the boss before she actually ends up submerging, then really what are you kind of getting out of uh, that, that bloodless timing on Imran and then of course at the end of the fight? That's why you see so many teams being very successful, having the bloodlust there on the Harboron ship. And while of course we were able to see pieces just annihilating that ship full without bloodlust, Imagine if you're pulling Skjall into it with Lust, with everybody going crazy on top of it. Yeah. They have really pulled the head off. I, I do think they could have pulled that off if they had saved Bloodlust for that pull because he was doing just crazy amounts of damage. And it's funny, Rob, it's exactly what you were alluding to at the beginning of the match. It all came down to just a couple of splash deaths, a couple of small mistakes, and that's all it took for a few seconds difference. Well, and congrats to Method. They really kept their head on a swivel there. Uh, it went down, and, you know, there's certainly a time maybe in that uh, situation where you, you maybe lose your cool and play uh, suboptimally, but they really kept it together, and they were able to eke out that all-important map one win, so uh, we're going to see if stupid mistakes can equalize, if they can find a way to come back, or if Method is going to be able to take this first series of the day. Don't go anywhere. More Mythic Dungeon Invitational on the other side of this short break. Oh, no, did I, did I do that wrong? I'm sorry, I'll stay in my lane this time. Boy, we'll talk about this at home. <laughs> Back what? into the thick of it, Jack, oh, as boy. Aiden would say. Excited <laughs> to see this dungeon. But, I, you know, Jack... It, 
it's like kind of both of us were saying. I think we're just going to see a lot of aggressive play. I, I doubt we're going to see too much, you know, Pridus being busted out in a lot of these bosses. Just kind of want to rifle through everything. But all eyes on this first pull here because a lot of teams opt to skip a lot of these first pull with the cats and the birds and the bears, oh my, leading up to the first boss. But we see Method and they getting right into the middle of it. Yep, bringing in the entire zoo here to be able to deal with. And one thing I've always been, uh, you know, pretty impressed with from the last series was how JB was playing very safe and very secure uh, throughout the ins to make sure that his team was, you know, being able to stay alive and. Uh, a lot of times he was pushing himself to the limit on stream or in practices to be able to kind of see how far he could take it and actually losing DPS to kind of bleeding out. Uh, but at this point, we haven't seen that yet, and at, it really has been paying out dividends for them on that Mall of Souls game, and I'm very interested in seeing how it's going to go, on the, especially when we're getting into the boss fights. So we do see the first skip coming out of Stupid Mistakes. They do use their mass stealth right away, get through most of that trash with, you know, the cats. The cats being particularly dangerous for the range as they do jump out, but they do it perfectly there as they pull the two mobs on the side. Before the two bears, that likely they were skip, Jack, I want to say, for Stupid Mistakes. We'll have to keep an eye on it. They get the two Ruiner patrol in there, nuking everything down together. Method and A, in the meantime, is working on a lot of the trash on the way because because we do see a lot of skips coming up in the shade of Xavius Log. We'll get to that later. But if Method and A is killing a lot of the trash at the start here, they will have time likely to skip most of it at the end. So different trash strategies coming out of both teams here right now. Yep, and you're actually seeing the invisibility potion uh, being popped by the entire team for Method and A and a here being able to skip past everything and start working their way towards Gladalis, like you said you're also also seeing jb of course taking advantage of that guardian affinity here you know we want to make sure that you know especially when you do engage with Gladalis, you want to be able to have that extra defensive capability here jb of course stealthing ahead to be able to kind of uh, start the rp process for everybody so that way they'll be able to run through very quickly uh but i like being able to see that extra safety uh, extra safety move uh it's very important when you're getting to Gladalis, but also when you're going to be uh dealing with xavius you know be able to have you know the frenzy regen kind of come back mechanic make sure that you're going to be in that safe position. But as a result, you are going to be seeing him using, you know, uh, Lady and the Child, Fury of Nature, uh, to be able to kind of take advantage of that Bear Form Moonfire DPS. And both teams, you know, you, you see any kind of utility or advantage of having that Rogue here. They don't have a 10-minute CD pod incurred for stupid mistakes. The Rogue was the one to pull the Bears and vanish on the side, so they don't have the extra five seconds plus rest time needed for stupid mistakes. Big damage coming in on Glade Dallas. For this boss, Jack, not too many mechanics to worry about, but he does transform in his Cat Form twice for every Bear Form. The Cat Form, of course, jumping on the furthest target from the boss applying a grievous wound you need to be healed above 90 percent in order to get rid of that increasing damage stack and of course that bear form will perform a huge frontal knockback in front of him and then charge the current target likely the tank doing more massive damage key here is really to tank the boss facing into a wall as the boss's hitbox will first impact that wall rather than the player and mitigate a lot of that damage yeah and you're seeing here just type grouping here uh, by the entire group to make sure that you know uh, when glade alice jumps away to hit the farthest target it's going to be that healer but the healer is also going to be able to kind of stay close enough to that melee range. You've seen uh, Alexa, for example, on the side of Super Mistakes, you know, being able to be very close in, not having to run out too far, and then, of course, in between, uh, you know, in between the leaps, they're able to kind of get back into melee, deal a little bit of damage, and then hop back out really quickly. Just so much damage coming in from Method and A. I mean, they've surpassed uh, Stupid Mistakes Glade Dallas right now, and they pulled around the same time, too. We're seeing a lot of more damage coming out of JB versus Liaxa Paladin over on Stupid Mistakes, so that's a big damage uh, difference between them. The d DPS aren't too different, just looking at the board right now, so really that healer making the damage in the long run, especially with these tyrannical bosses with the higher health pool. Yeah, and that's one of the things, because of the fact that, you know, you're running with the rest of Druid, you are able to get, you know, uh, the Fury of Nature, extra DPS, uh, the extra arcane damage from your Moonfire uh, being able to be applied, whereas Paladin, you've got Judgment, you've got Holy Shock, and, you know, you could maybe get some Crusader Strikes in when uh, you get leaked out at, but when you have to be constantly dipping out of melee, you're losing out on all that auto attack damage, you know, if they're moving the boss, of course, out of uh, your Consecration, uh, like they did just there for some mistakes, you know, it, it definitely puts more and more pressure on your DPS uh, to be able to kind of carry the, the extra weight. I like what Stupid Mistakes is doing here. Of course, after that bear form, they drag the boss away from the wall right away to kind of keep that real estate before those ooey gooey rich and chewies fall down and a lot of that spooge to the ground. You want to make sure that it's not covered in too much of the area. Glade Alice, of course, now falling for Method on the left side of the screen. They will start on some of the trash here. Now, they did kill more of the trash pre-first boss than did Stupid Mistake. Oh, no, actually, they didn't. Excuse me. They're at 23% right now. There's a lot of kind of strategy in the trash pulls coming up. Some people do the double keeper pack. Some don't. Some do all three keepers. Uh, and and, you know, don't do as much of the trash and shade of Xavius's area. So we'll have to see exactly what they pull, but they do get this first standard pull here with the one Dryad and the two Blossoms. Yeah, and one of the weird things about this instance in particular is how well you're going to be able to skip past some of this trash. You know, the invisibility potion that Method NA used, for example, you know, they're skipping past some trash packs that were going to be a lot harder to be able to group up together and condense together very rapidly here. And it kind of is, you know, shown off by the Dryad, which 
Uh, while it can be tanked, we'll have you know, that aggro, but it will kind of just pr prance around, kind of jump around all over the place and be much, much more difficult to, to group up together. So you're seeing that's Method NA here, and uh, Stupid Mistakes are, of course, gra grabbing all the flowers in the garden behind the house, bringing it all in together. You still are kind of having a way to be able to get the mass grip, to be able to get the dryad in, stun it, and be able to take it down very quickly before it jumps away. These flowers just getting nude down so quickly, often used for stem cell research. <laughs> Method NA starting to back up right now as they're going gardening. Stupid Mistakes just slightly ahead as they finish the last flower here, after which I expect that the Major, the Rogue, will pull the Double Keeper pack to the side. Looks like the Rogue is going to be the one to do it. Get everything there, vanish as the rest of the team safely goes down the way, grabs the patrol, and likely goes into those five GUIs, the Dwellers that we always talk about, which are needed to kill in order to have access to Oakheart, the second boss of the dungeon. Yeah, but you're seeing you know, JV on the side of Method NA doing the exact same thing here, uh, being able to just pull everything off to the side, getting that quick death in, and then he's going to be able to, of course, mount up and be able to kind of skip around everything else here. So as the team is just pulling that away, you're not having to wait for the battle res, and you're able to have, you know, uh, E-Man be able to continue pulling all the trash in together and keep on uh, going and still making progress while JB catches up. JB doesn't actually mount up. He turns into a mount himself. Oh, Jack, we'll have to discuss <laughs> this later. Method and A pulling just the uh, trash here without the dwellers coming up, opting to nuke it down. Now, they did bring some extra trash on top of the three that are patrolling here, so they wanted to play it just a bit safe here. Stupid mistakes doing the same thing, but I believe they only have the three here. Rearing up for the dweller pull are both teams right now. Now, the dwellers are particularly scary. I, I know we are in in a tyrannical setting right now, but those dwellers do channel a cast on someone that does chain damage and then of course explodes for damage with a five second fear if the cast is allowed to go off. So not only do you need to interrupt, but you need to interrupt right away and there's five of them. So we do have leg sweeps, of course, on both sides. Um, things that are going to be done hard CC and you got to get them down in that window of opportunity before you start having to play too defensive. Yeah, and, and a lot of times it's because of the desync that occurs with these GUIs where they will be casting and channeling at different times. See, when you get like that mass stun out, you know, you have to be very careful with your kicks and make sure you're kind of coordinating the kicks when possible when you start running out of those group wide CCs here. You know, see, so at this point, a lot of times you're going to be start, you know, get the leg sweep out, get the extra stuns out, uh, and then at you start slowly kind of rotating through kicks on uh, all of them as they appear, and of course, rotating through those good old Blood Elf silences. Method and A now rearing up to pull our favorite tree boss of the dungeon. Jack? Agronox is actually my favorite. Okay, Jack, I promise. <laughs> no more tree jokes. All right, we're going to make a treaty here. Now the team <laughs> turns the boss around, making sure that none of that nightmare breath actually hits any of the members. It's kind of a 30 second cycle rotation boss where you have that AoE stomp coming out of the group. That does a fair bit of damage you see every 30 seconds, along with a crushing grip on the tank that will do an absolute ton of channel damage. Then the tank will get thrown on top of one member for some light splash damage as well. Lastly, Jack, of course, are those roots on the ground that are important to deal with, and there's multiple ways to deal with them. Yeah, and at this point, you're are seeing you know the roots uh the entire group spreading out from method na you know not quite stacking up together whereas you see stupid mistakes staying in very close together that way lex is going to be able to uh hand of freedom himself be able to run over all the roots to be able to clear them here but you are seeing of course everyone's kind of spreading out and they are uh going to be allowing the roots to stay up that way marv is going to be able to get you know a little bit of extra single target damage out of them here instead of kind of clearing all of them out right away you know having you know jb kind of taking his time clearing them off uh, just a little bit later here, uh, rather than getting all of them stacked up together and then shifting once. Method and A slightly ahead on the boss, about 8-9%. Stupid Mistakes getting their AOE punt there. I really like what they're doing here with the Roots. It's really clever of them stacking up. The four players move away. Paladin's already in position to just cast Hand of Freedom on themselves. I like it. Um, curious as to why it's not the Mage that's doing that, so the Mage doesn't have to move and, you know, not incur the damage loss because the Paladin can more freely move and still get some Holy Shocks in. Nonetheless, it's working for them. No problem. Eight difference is maintained between the two teams right now. I mean, this is just a grind of a boss right now. You just got to make sure you deal with that spike damage, which the DKs are very good for helping with that consumption every other uh, AOE hit, making sure the group's healthy before that hit because that's really what's going to kill you. It's a huge spike hit. And making sure that the tank doesn't die during the grip, which, again, no problem for a DK. With this amount of gear and haste that they have, they will have access to vamp blood for pretty much every crushing grip and, of course, have access to AMS every other. Yep, and at this point, you're seeing, you know, JB doing what he can to be able to take care of a lot of the, those explosives for everybody else here, uh, you know, when they are, of course, getting a lot of them out at once. Because when you do have multiple roots spawning at any time in an explosive format, you are going to get a couple extra there that the uh, that Marv is not going to be able to take down himself. Uh, so even though you are going to get that little bit extra damage uh, from the Warlock being able to kill those very rapidly, Ooh. you are going to have to actually have somebody else to help out here. And, and you are seeing E-Man going oh. down. Purgatory was down. Marvin does take a very big hit, but he does survive. And at that point, it's the scariest thing. And we're making sure you're going to be able to survive that. And if you're not going to be able, if you're just seconds away from getting that vamp 
blood back and he's so scary there. It's scary there. I guess I spoke too soon about how safe it really is for the tank, but we do see the gap widening here between Method and Stupid Mistakes. Method just having all that extra single target damage, of course, benefiting from that multi dotting with the roots from the Warlock. Execute range being knocked down as well. Method moves over to the minor GUIs along with that blood tainted Fury up ahead. Now, this Fury, there's a bit of a trick here. You want to make sure that as you kill it, there's no one in melee range to aggro because it does split into four lesser Furies, which do not award trash percent. So it's essentially just a huge waste of time, not to mention that they cast uh, some Metamorphosis cast that will actually spawn them into a large uh, Blood Tainted Elemental again. So you'll see players often get the, uh, the uh, mob down to about 10%, 5% health, stun it, and everyone will run away while the range cleaned it up. Yeah, they're, they're uh, taking advantage, of course, of that extra charge that's going to be going out uh, by the Fury, then being able to kind of drag it into the corner here. You probably see the grip coming out there by E-Man, getting it into the corner, stun going out, everyone running away as Marv does end up finishing it off here, and they're able to continue on with the trash. It's very important that they're dragging it away, of course, from any of the, you know, the little routes or any of the pathways, because if somebody does die, they're going to go all the way back to, I believe, Glade Dallas's room, have to run all the way forward, uh, and it can become such, such a pain if you're having extra trash that you haven't cleared out, just going to be blocking the path. Right, you are, Jack. Both teams now waiting for that second blood-tainted Fury to move out of the way. Teams often don't deal with this one. We'll see a root come up or some kind of CC, or the teams will sneak by very quickly, avoiding it. Moving into Dress Ron's room, the third boss of the dungeon. Method and Aina right now being ahead on trash. Oh, actually, the Gooeys didn't die yet for stupid mistakes, so they'll be around in the same range. Dress Ron immediately being pulled for Method and A here. Three main abilities to watch out for on this boss. Does have a frontal breath that will target the closest, highest aggro in proximity. So if the tank's actually caught out grabbing some of these whelps, which teams often do in order to boost their single target damage on the boss it will actually turn to one of the melee and breathe on them so they have to make sure and be on the ball about moving there's of course jack the aoe kind of wind that pushes players back and finally there's that cave in too lots to look out for for the healer here yeah and the pressure on the healer is definitely going to be uh very high here you're seeing effervescence was dropped in the path of course of the knockback there that way everyone's still going to be able to get a little bit of additional healing as they're going to keep on running back into the boss to be able to deal with it marv and jb doing a great job of being able to bait that cave in like we mentioned here but you are seeing both teams of course pulling in of those extra whelplings to be able to get a little bit of extra single target damage out for the warlock or the rogue respectively here and at this point it is going to be that additional pressure on the tanks to be able to survive through that we've seen a couple deaths uh, for e-man e from the first two games here so it's very important to be able to kind of rotate through your cooldowns calling for externals if need be making sure you're going to be uh, staying on top of that because you do need to have that kind of constant flow of whelplings coming out and you even can have it with consumption to be able to get a little extra leech uh, healing for everybody when the cave in or when the uh, knockback starts right you are jack whelp played by both teams here right now. Both, I mean, this is just a grinder of a boss. You gotta just make sure that you're not caught with uh, a cave-in in the boss's hitbox because, as you mentioned, the boss does push you further and further. The further you are away from the center of that circular red hitbox in the middle of the boss, you can see JB kind of being caught on the side there. It does well to blink back in, making sure he doesn't aggro any extra whelps, but the cave-in needs to be baited away, otherwise the boss has to be displaced. And so we just discussed, you're trying to move the boss as a tank, turns around, starts breathing on the melee, you're trying to get back in time with the whelps, the winds start, you're out of position, and it just leads to a bunch of bad stuff. Only 7% between the two teams here, so they actually maintain a kind of a, a closed gap between the two teams, not uh, too much damage for Method and A being pulled ahead here, but we are getting lower to that range. Actually, they're closing the gap now. We're looking at 4 or 5% difference. Yeah, and at this point, Method and A does still have to deal with, does still have to account for those three deaths that are already on the board where Stupid Mistakes has made no mistakes thus far. Very important to you know, make sure there is that 15 seconds that uh, Method and A will have to make up here. Both teams sitting pretty on Bloodlust. Stupid Mistakes having, you know, the additional battle res over in Method and A because they had to use it in the last, you know, 5 or 6% uh, there on Oakheart. So, very important going into Xavius. You know, both teams likely are going to be looking to learn lessons from you know their, the other teams that have already competed and play very aggressively for it so they might end up needing that uh, additional battle res here coming up so dresser on going down for method and a, of course dress wrong being trying dresser off for uh, stupid mistakes as well as they start to run down towards the log now this is where we're going to see some skips come in method and a has the five percent advantage on the trash they're going to pull both of these packs together at the start the caster packs a lot of dangerous shadow bolts coming in on the tank and of course we have do have those dread infernos from the imps that kind of really cuts down your real estate in this narrow area and does a ton of damage you want to make sure you kind of cc and silence everything as quickly as possible with those blood off silences for now and 
as they nuke everything down, try to get that 100%, and we'll likely see a skip for the remainder of the log coming out of Method and A. Stupid Mistakes will have that option too, as they start to deal with some of the trash above the log, because they do have access to that mass stealth from the rogue, so they'll be able to skip more of the trash downstairs. Yeah, I love seeing the positioning uh, actually coming out of Marv there to be making sure that he was standing almost on top of that first trash pack when it was pulled. That way it's not a far jump for him to kind of get back into position uh, to be able to deal with a lot of these bats that are coming out here. And that's one of the things you want to see constantly out of these teams is the experience, is the practice, you know, knowing how they're able to not only do as much damage as possible, you know, have good CC chains, things like that, but also the strong positioning to be able to quickly transition into the next trash pack here, saving extra seconds uh, every moment that they can. So we do see the stealth, uh, the, the invis pot rather, come in from Method and A, stupid mistakes, kind of rearing up right now. We could see they're going to pull just a bit more trash. Obviously, they saw 13% to make up. They'll use that mass stealth later. Method and A well ahead at this point in terms of getting ready to pull Shade of Xavius, the last boss. But, but they do have that three death difference to make up. That's an extra 15 seconds, which is a lot of time on this last ball to be ma uh, boss to be made up. Stupid mistakes dealing with the last other trash right now. And Method and A has now pulled Shade of Xavius, the final boss of the dungeon. Popped their bloodlust right on the pull. A lot of mechanics that are really scary here on the teams especially in this tyrannical setting you have the nightmare bolt going off we just see that puts that little pacification ring around you your buddies have to help you out by standing in it otherwise you can't do anything for 20 seconds you have dispels you have channels to interrupt you have um, of course the paranoia that you want to move away from with the fear jack and then that huge nuke at 50 percent as well that's right and you know you're seeing as targets can of course be random as to what you're going out on so very important to be able to kind of rotate through personals through externals uh whatever you have so at this point you know what i what i would really be looking for out of jb is just playing safe playing secure while the the other dp while all the dps is playing as aggressively as they possibly can and at this point you're seeing of course coach mid getting uh like you said the paranoia on him so you're having uh dark and uh e-man being able to stand right on top of each other to make sure uh they're able to kind of stay away and not have the fear going out onto mid and like you said, you know, the 50% transition can be so dangerous. You're seeing people trying to hold on to their personals if they can, all their large defenses to be able to survive that point because they really can't afford to be uh, using them, for example, on like the feed on the weeks or the nightmare bolts. And here comes the big bang right now for Method. We're going to see if all the players are able to hold on. I'm sure they've been holding on to their defensive. Should be no problem for the team. Everybody in healthy state here. JV working quickly to get everyone back up because the nightmare, of course, is that nightmare bolt. Hitting a low player right after that explosion does well to heal up the team. They're moving well towards the end. Stupid mistakes now just reaching that 80% mark on the boss has used their bloodlust as well. But, I mean, they're well over 15 seconds behind on this boss right now. They're going to have to hope for a death or maybe even a full team wipe on Method side in order to be able to take this match and continue the series. At this point, that does not seem to be happening here as JV is, you know, continuing playing safe, being able to, you know, rotate through cooldowns here, making sure he was able to keep Dark up when that feed on the week was going out. But they've also been getting, you know, a lot of the feed on the weeks, a lot of the Nightmare Bolts, of course, going on to uh, Band Name or E-Man, uh, making sure that, you know, when a lot of that damage gets funneled into the tank that already is dealing with it, it makes things a lot easier. And as you're seeing right there, JV taking Frenzy, re or taking frenzied Regen from his Guardian Affinity, really paying damage dividends there to make sure that you know he's able to instantly shift into bear form have the additional hp and start healing himself right off the right off the bat yeah, i mean jb is showing that you really don't always need a holy paladin while playing that rester druid that we know he's so well versed in shade of xavius now dipping into the single digits for method should be able to clean this up soon while stupid mistakes on the right side of the screen is reaching their explosion mark for phase two which of course does spawn the swirlies we failed to mention that we're seeing on shade of xavius on method and a side we do have a death go down on the holy paladin unfortunately they have two battle reses available immediately get that res up but the road goes down as well, so they're going to need to use another one right away. That's an extra 10 seconds on the board, and that is not what Stupid Mistakes wanted to see or have done to them at the end of the match here. But even after, of course, you know, they didn't want to have those additional deaths, you know, from an otherwise very clean run here, they also did play a lot slower going into Dresdron, as you see, you know, Yikes. <laughs> almost going down, and they are almost going down again. It was very, very scary uh, to be able to deal with, but... You know, Method really started pulling, ramping away from them when they got into Dresser on, instantly getting back into pulling all that trash and really taking it from there. Yeah, and it's, you know, and I'm sure we'll talk about this uh, right now. Hi, Rob. Hey, <laughs> hey welcome back. Yeah, I, Method looking uh, very dominant there, especially when it came to the, the damage they were doing. Uh, my MVP for that match,